Hi, and welcome to Jules Voto's Photo Focus. In this video, I'm going to tell you how you could get into film photography for under $100. Now, film has enjoyed a resurgence in recent years, and even people who are shooting digital cameras have kind of gone back to film, myself included. Not that I shoot film exclusively, I mostly shoot digital, but I love to still go back, pick up one of my old film cameras, and go out for a day of shooting. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about the cameras, and then in my next video, I'll go over some of the lenses available for these cameras. Okay? In 1970, there were approximately 20 manufacturers of film cameras, and many of those manufacturers produced several different models. The cameras I'm going to talk about today are four of the best from the mid-1960s. Yet each of these cameras I purchased for well under $50. Okay, so uh, we're going to start in alphabetical order with the Canon FT. Canon FT was introduced in 1966. It is um, very well made, as all these cameras are. Um, fully mechanical, only requires a battery for the meter. And one other thing uh, with respect to all these cameras, uh, you know, these cameras are approaching 60 years old. And uh, the meters, usually when you buy one of these cameras, the meters are not functioning. I don't really care about that. I prefer when using one of these cameras to go out with a handheld meter or there's actually an app for your cell phone that will meter the light for you, or you could use the Sunny 16 rule. Now, if you're unfamiliar with any of these things, there's plenty of YouTube videos on Sunny 16. You just search in your app store for uh, exposure meter, or you could pick up a handheld meter at any of the major um, uh, camera stores. Okay, so the Canon FT and all these cameras have shutter speeds from one to one thousandth of a second. They sync with electronic flash at a 60th of a second. The Canon FT has what's called a breech lock lens mount. Okay, you just put the lens on, you line the dots up, and just turn the ring, and the camera is, uh, and the lens is mounted. It had a partial meter, what Canon called a partial meter. It just meter metered the central area of the focusing screen. There is also a lock for the shutter release, so you can't accidentally uh, fire the camera. It came standard with a built-in uh, cold shoe. Not a hot shoe, you needed to plug the flash in. Uh, one thing the Canon has that none of these other cameras have, it has a quick load system. Uh, you basically just drop the film leader in, and this part here closes when you close the camera back and catches the film. So it's the easiest of these cameras to load. Lenses are readily available. Uh, it also has a mirror lockup, as do two of the others. Okay, and depth of field preview. Next camera is the Minolta SRT 101, an extremely popular camera, also introduced in 1966. It has a bayonet lens mount. Okay, um, again, speeds from one to one thousandth. A depth of field preview, mirror lockup, self timer. Also, I should fail to mention the Canon has a self-timer. It also has a cold shoe, um, and uh, it has what's called a CLC metering system. It basically metered the entire screen, but kind of automatically compensated for backlight. Uh, to open the back on this camera, you just pull up on the rewind knob. It has a conventional um, take-up spool for loading film. Okay. Next is the Nikromat FTN. Now, I did a full video on this camera, and in the future, I will do a full video on each of these other cameras, showing how they work, explaining all the features in detail. The Nikromat has a center-weighted metering system. It also has a bayonet lens mount. Okay, very quick to mount the lens. Um, it has a depth of field preview, mirror lockup, self-timer, this camera has a sync speed of 1 one twenty-fifth of a second. The others all sync with electronic flash at a 60, 60th of a second. One more difference with the Nikromat, 
the shutter speed dial is around the lens mount. Okay, so easy access with your left hand. Uh, the others all have conventional top mounted shutter speed dials. Finally, is the Pentax Spotmatic. It's, it's the Nikomat, by the way, was introduced in 1967. The Pentax Spotmatic was introduced in 1964, so it's the oldest of these cameras. It has a screw thread lens mount, the M42 screw thread lens mount. Um, it has, again, speeds from one to 1,000, sync at a 60th of a second. To open the back, you just pull up on the uh, rewind, knob, it has a self timer, no mirror lockup on the um, on the Spotmatic. Uh, there's a switch on the side that stops the lens down for depth of field preview, which is actually a meter switch. Uh, this camera has what's called stop down metering, so when you turn the metering system on, the lens stops down to the shooting aperture, it does cause the uh, screen to go dark. And then once you meter, you just press the switch down and the lens will open up to, to full aperture. Also, I should mention that the Canon also has stop down metering. To use the metering system on the, can, you, on the Canon, you just press the uh, self timer lever towards the camera and that will stop the lens down. You meter, let go and take the photo. All these are excellent cameras, very well made, all metal. Um, you cannot go wrong with any of these cameras. The Canon, I paid $20 for this body, and it actually came with the zoom lens. The Minolta, I don't know, I think it was like $30 with a 50 millimeter 1.8. You can even find the bodies cheaper. The Nikomat, for the body, I paid $15, believe it or not. I mean, the meter doesn't work on, on any of these cameras, but it's in excellent condition. The Pentax, the Spotmatic here, I paid $25 for the body. Uh, and again, in a future video, in, the, in my next video, I'm going to go over the lenses, and you could get those lenses inexpensive. So while, when I say for under $100, you could go well under $100 for any of these cameras. And I use digital cameras. I use mirrorless cameras. And these cameras are so much simpler. Um, they're not battery dependent, you know, other than for the meter, if you had a working meter. Um, it's just satisfying to use one of these cameras. And I've compared it in the past uh, to driving a classic car as opposed to a modern car with all the bells and whistles. And uh, they're just simpler. It, it, the sound of the shutters, are, are just they just sound great. They feel great. Uh, they're a little on the heavy side, but uh, they're all excellent cameras. There's a ton of lenses available for all four of these cameras. Now, as I mentioned, there were 20 manufacturers of um, 35 millimeter film cameras in uh, 1970, early 70s. And there are many other good ones, but for me, I mean, of course you have the professional cameras, the Nikon F, the Canon F1, but you're gonna obviously pay more for them. But if you wanna get into film photography inexpensively, these are my suggestions. Again, they're all both very, all very popular and excellent machines. Uh, now, one other thing as far as briefly on the lenses, the nice thing is if you're just starting in photography and you pick up one of these cameras and you, over time, pick up several lenses and then eventually get into mirrorless, any of the lenses for any of these cameras, in fact, any manual focus lens, and even many of the autofocus lenses will work on any mirrorless camera. The autofocus lenses won't autofocus in many cases, but so any of these lenses, whether it's the Pentax, the, the Nikromat, the Minolta, or the Canon, any lens you buy for one of these cameras will work on a future mirrorless camera. So, uh, and the same thing goes if you're currently using a mirrorless camera and you decide you want to try film, again, any lens you buy for one of these bodies will work on that camera. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you have any questions, please email me or leave a comment in the description below. I will answer your comments. Um, I hope you enjoyed it.
If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I come out with a new video every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Thank you.